Great. Well, we'll get started now. Uh, my name is Phil Herrenrein, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law. I want to thank everybody for joining us today for this presentation on our litigation and dispute resolution concentration. I'm joined by um, a wonderful professor uh, at our law school and three wonderful students as well. I'm going to let them introduce themselves right now before we get started with our um, with our question and answer. I also want you all to um, definitely feel free to use the Q&A box during this presentation to ask any questions that you have uh, about Villanova Law's litigation and dispute resolution concentration, any questions that you might have for our students about their experiences at the law school, that's what we're here for to answer your questions. So definitely feel free to do that at any time, but I'm gonna kick it off to our Professor Mooney for her introduction. Hi everybody uh, and welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. Um, my name is Christine Mooney and I am a faculty member, have been so for about 21 years at Villanova Law. Um, I am also, in addition to teaching uh, certain courses, which I'll get into in a second, I'm also uh, the director of professional skills here, which means that I oversee um, and, and, and serve as a liaison for all courses that teach our law students uh, the nuts and bolts of how to apply uh, what they're doing in practice, so skills-related kinds of courses um, across the, the, uh, the, the three years. Uh, the classes that I currently teach are negotiation and mediation advocacy and interviewing and counseling. Um, also in my current wheelhouse is uh, civil pretrial as well as trial advocacy. Um, so my focus is, as you might guess, on professional skills. I'm incredibly passionate about it, and I really enjoy um, maintaining and, and always improving our, our curriculum and extracurricular as well as experiential opportunities that help students uh, who are really on a path to want to be litigators. Awesome, and then we can just go in order. Uh, Lisa, Seth, and Taylor, if you want to introduce yourselves. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Mayer. I'm a 3L at Villanova Law. Um, I graduated from Gettysburg College in 2019, and I came straight to law school. Um, let's see what else. I worked uh, last summer at a small litigation firm, um, and I worked this past summer at Marshall Dennehy. I'll be working for them post graduation, so very, very litigation based. Hi, everybody. Uh, also 3L, my name's Seth Ford. It's a pleasure uh, to meet all of you. I did my undergrad at Penn State uh, after in economics. After I graduated from Penn State, I joined a financial firm named BlackRock in Wilmington, so not that far away. Uh, then I came to Villanova Law with an interest in litigation. I did my first summer on the Eastern District of Pennsylvania with uh, Judge Joshua Wilson, which was a great experience. And then this last summer, uh, I joined a corporate litigation firm in Delaware, uh, Prickett Jones and Elliott, and that's where I'll be going after graduation as well. Hi everyone, um, I am originally from South Florida, so I have a degree in political science from Florida Atlantic University. And after college, I took a two year hiatus before I came to law school. I was actually Miss Florida 2018, so that's a very <laughs> strange um, and unique uh, thing to do before you coming to law school, but it was always my plan to be a litigator. And when I came to Villanova, that that pursuit definitely was confirmed. Um, my 1L summer, I was an extern for a federal judge at the EBPA, Judge Kenny. And during my 2L year, I worked uh, doing research for a small personal injury firm, Laramore and Farnish. Last summer, I worked for a much larger personal injury firm, um, Klein Inspector. And right now I'm completing an externship with um, Judge Megan McCarthy King at the Pennsylvania Superior Court. And um, I've loved all of my experiences, work and coursework from the litigation concentration because it really confirmed that I want to go into civil litigation, specifically personal injury. So um, I don't exactly have the benefit of having such concrete plans of where I'm going after graduation but I am currently applying to civil litigation, um, defense, and plaintiff firms in South Florida. Awesome. Thank you all for that. And I guess a fun fact, Taylor and I share the uh, 
the same background of having gone to FU together and then went to Villanova Law together. So that's a pretty exciting small world. Um, I'm gonna go back to Professor Mooney for this next uh, se section that um, we just want a bit of an introduction to the litigation and dispute resolution concentration, the way in which students get involved in that. Um, Professor Mooney, if you can just give us a brief background into the concentration and how it prepares uh, graduates for careers as trial lawyers and litigators. Um, and if you wanna also discuss some of the coursework that the students um, will partake if they choose to go that route at Villanova Law. Sure. So uh, the first thing to know is that this concentration, like all concentrations at the law school, are not something that you need to know you want to do when you come in. In fact, you don't even apply to join the concentration until the spring of your 1L year. So it does give you an opportunity to test out a little bit um, with some of your coursework, uh, whether this is something you think that you want to pursue. So if it is, then you apply in the spring of your 1L year and um, the, uh, upon acceptance, there are a list of requirements that you have to fulfill in order to complete the concentration. Um, I think the real benefit in addition to the actual preparation, um, which I could talk about forever, um, our coursework and, and all the different opportunities, but is that you have an indication on your transcript that demonstrates that you are specifically interested in being an, a, an advocate. So uh, whether that's litigation or dispute resolution, whether you wanna be a trial lawyer um, or some other avenue in litigation, um, it really brands you as a person who has gone after that and uh, taken foundational courses as well as more sophisticated courses that will arm you with the skills that you need uh, to succeed in that area. Um, so we have a list of required courses that everybody in the concentration has to take, and those are just very foundational courses that any litigator um, would be uh, would, would need to know. So things like civil pretrial, um, we have a specialized course just in deposition strategy. Uh, we have a class in class actions and other complex litigation. Uh, these are all things that everybody takes. Um, evidence. Um, there's a dispute resolution course. There is also my favorite negotiation, which I teach. Um, you have to take one or the other. You may take both, but you need to take one or the other. Um, we have uh, a very robust legal writing requirement that also separates us. And uh, for the, your 2L year, uh, if you're in this concentration, you take a requirement that is centered around appellate advocacy. Um, and then there's also a trial advocacy requirement. So those are kind of the basics. Um, there, in addition to that, you have a wide uh, variety of courses to select from two different menus. Um, so you have to take so many credits from menu A and so many credits from menu B. And what I think, um, I might be getting just a little bit ahead of myself here and what makes us distinctive, but I think what makes us distinctive um, and what I really like about our offerings are that um, they're deep. So anybody that wants to be a litigator, you're not gonna just be a litigator, right? You're gonna be a, a litigator in a particular area. And so our concentration um, guides our students to learn sort of the, the practical skills, but to do so through the lens of the kind of area of law that they're interested in. So we have requirements, but you have a wide variety of choices um, how to fulfill those substantive requirements, whether you're interested in family law, whether you're interested in antitrust, whether you're interested in bankruptcy um, or criminal defense, all of those uh, and more you get to pick. And then we have a second menu uh, that is full of skills-based courses um, and you're required to take so many uh, credits from that. In addition to that, we also have an experiential requirement. So all students at Villanova have to fulfill six credits of experiential learning. Um, and those who are in litigation must do so in a context that's going to give you litigation experience. Um, so you can do that either through a clinic or an externship. 
Um, we have almost all of our clinics, I think, except for one, um, fulfills this requirement because you're going to get litigation experience if you take that clinic. And then in addition to that, we have literally hundreds of externship placements, um, depending on what you're interested in and what you want to do. Everything from judicial externships to working in private law firms to working in public interest. Um, I have one that I approved today for someone that's going to go work for the PA disciplinary uh the disciplinary uh, bar. So if you get in trouble as a Pennsylvania lawyer um, and you have to go up before the disciplinary board, that's an adjudication. So that gives you just a, a little taste of the range of actual experiences that you get. And that is all part of our concentration as well, not just coursework, but actually applying what you learned and going out and doing it. Professor Mooney, just a really quick follow-up for, for individuals that are attending today that are interested in this concentration. Um, would you say that it's a a very competitive process? Is it a process by which if they're interested, they'll be able to apply and have a good chance of getting into the concentration to participate? So there are, uh, the, the re yes, the short answer is yes. I try to take everybody that I can that qualifies. Um, in order to qualify, there is a, um, a GPA, it's, uh, I think, requirement. Um, you must submit a letter of interest that to me that says, here's why I wanna do this. Um, you don't have to have, of course, had any prior experience, but just a, 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 a letter of interest stating what it is uh, that you hope to do in this concentration. Um, I take the max that I can take, which is 10 students per year. Um, and the reason that we have that max is that it gets you, um, you get to jump the line <laughs> for certain courses that are required. Thank you. So I know that Professor Mooney just went through some of the courses that the students in the concentration need to take, and I want to turn it over to our students, Lisa, Taylor, Seth. Can you all just go through for me and sort of maybe uh, describe or, or say what your two most favorite courses were in the concentration? Uh, maybe the professor you took it with and why you enjoyed it so much. Taylor, I can start with you, and then we'll go to Lisa and then Seth. Sure. Um, I loved Professor Mooney's class negotiations. Um, it was a really big change for me because every week we did um, a problem that was like on a different area of law. So it wasn't like, oh, I want to do personal injury and I'm just going to you know, be able to negotiate the personal injury settlements. Um, it really opened my eyes to the different types of law um, and, and really strengthened my ability to be adaptable, to be flexible, and really showed me my own strengths and weaknesses in communication, which I would have never known that I had unless I did those exercises. Um, and so that was one of my favorites. And I'll, I'll do another one that I'm taking right now. Seth and I are actually in deposition strategy and tactics. Um, it's taught by a very successful, very successful um, civil litigator, Andrew, Andrew Human. And um, like just yesterday, we did an exercise on dealing with a difficult lawyer. So he had his partner come in and basically be the most difficult attorney ever, objecting to everything, just being incredibly annoying and obstructionist. And it was a great exercise to know how to deal with those types of attorneys in those types of situations. It was very jarring, um, but it was a great exercise because now um, my first experience with that type of attorney won't be when I'm out in practice. It will have been in, um, in a classroom setting, which is very supportive and a very um, conducive environment to learning from it. So those are just two examples and I could go on and on, but really the exercise of actually doing it, not just reading about it or theorizing or watching is just completely invaluable. Yeah, I, Taylor, I agree wholeheartedly with everything you just said. I think that it really is an invaluable um, experience to have a first experience. Like um, I also took interviewing and counseling and a lot of lawyering is people skills and you can get A's in all of your base courses. But I think one of the most valuable skills to have is to really be comfortable not being comfortable because, um, you know, when you're talking to clients like for externships or clinics, um, you know, they're real people. And so knowing how to talk to people is almost as important as, you know, knowing the law you're, you're giving them guidance about. Um, and so interviewing and counseling um, was also one of my favorite classes and um, trial advocacy, which I took with uh, Professor Omara um, was also a really good class because 
Um, we also had an exercise where um, a very difficult lawyer um, was objecting to our uh, what we were doing, and it was um, it was very stressful in class, but it also taught us a lot. And I think that having the confidence to know that you know what you're doing, um, or at least enough to know kind of what the next step is, um, is a great skill to have. And I think. Um, I took the, just the basic trial advocacy. And so uh, our final was going through and conducting a trial. Um, and so you learn about, you know, cross-examination and kind of the basics to get you through it. Um, but it was, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, stressful sometimes, but it is a lot of fun. It's very valuable too. So I, I think the theme that keeps coming up and uh, when I was asked this question, it, it was the first thing that popped in my head was just, uh, you know, learning skills that, you'll be able to apply in practice. And I think uh, Lisa and Taylor touched on, uh, you know, some of your big, bigger classes, uh, your real doctrinal legal classes are, are extremely important. But I think where this law school and Professor Mooney does a really good job is finding these courses that when you do become an attorney, you can, uh, you have a foundation built because you put yourself through some of these exercises that these classes offer. One of them was civil pretrial practice, which my class was taught by Professor Maheen, Colleen Maheen from uh, Morgan Lewis. I mean, she's an absolutely phenomenal attorney. Ex she's experienced. Uh, she's been a litigator for a very long time. She's really a cornerstone of you know Morgan Lewis's litigation practice in Philadelphia. So to start, just to have the opportunity to, you know, twice a week or once a week, depending on your class, to to be in front of her and hear, um, you know, real stories uh, about litigation and real clients and real situations, I think is something that uh, you is really, uh, you know, it's irreplaceable and something that I've cherished. So the adjunct professors that this concentration uh, utilizes, I think is probably one of my favorite aspects of this concentration. And then Taylor and I take the deposition class together with uh, Andy Human and another extremely successful attorney who uh, we have a real deposition coming up and he's bringing in individuals from his firm to play the witnesses. So I just, those exercises that are created uh, through these classes, I, I, I'm willing to say that I don't think a lot of other schools are going to these lengths to put their uh, students in these positions. And I know uh, when I do get in practice, you know, that's, it's just a leg up and uh, a sense of being comfortable uh, during a deposition, marketing exhibit, things like that, that, uh, you know, we've practiced time and time again. And, you know, it, it'll be one less thing to think about when, when we're attorneys. Yeah, thank you all for that. I can second what Taylor said about negotiation and mediation. That was one of my favorite classes in law school too with Professor Mooney. But Professor Mooney, something that just came up time and time again with, I guess, every student's answer is the usage of adjunct faculty. And for those that are in attendance, can you just speak a little bit about what that means and the different individuals, uh, sort of, you know, our partnership with them and um, maybe the benefits to having adjunct, adjunct faculty assist in teaching classes for the concentration? Yes, so that is very much by design. Um, for these classes in particular. So the, the, for those of you that don't know, an adjunct professor is essentially a person who isn't a full-time faculty member, they're a practitioner. Um, we have people who are retired and current sitting judges, um, as well as uh, from you know a, a whole host of people who are practicing at the highest levels. Um, and the reason that I think it's particularly important um, and what they bring to the table in the skills kind of curriculum is that these are not skills that are, they're, they're, we all have textbooks and there are things that you read and there's demos that you watch, but there is nothing passive about the learning that goes on in these courses. They are extremely um, practice oriented. And what better way to immerse yourself in the reality of what it's going to be like to practice than by uh, being in a conversation with people who are gifted teachers, but they're also, they're not theorizing what it might be like to have a deposition that goes off the rails or to be able to put a trial together with a witness who is extremely difficult to cross-examine. They're actually doing this um, on a day-to-day -day basis. As I said, sometimes it's a judge. You can't really, um, 
get you, you know that you're getting the real deal when that judge tells you that that kind of evidence isn't going to be admitted or that objection isn't going to be sustained when it's somebody that's doing that um, every day. So we do carefully select um, and embrace having uh, various adjuncts um, who are, again, these are people who are very seasoned in the particular area of law in which they're teaching. So I'm going to go back to Professor Mooney now. One thing that you had mentioned earlier is the experiential learning requirement. For those in attendance, as Professor Mooney said, you have to uh, complete six credits of experiential learning during your time as a law student at Villanova. And that goes for every ABA um, school as well, every ABA um, uh, law school around the country. But at Villanova Law, we allow you to do up to 17 credits of experiential learning. So there's a lot more that you can do outside of just a six credit requirement. But I wanted to just to ask Professor Mooney to help us um, just explain a little bit more about what you can do to um, gain those six credits of experiential learning. I know that the law school obviously has clinical programs that students can participate in and also externships as mentioned beforehand. Um, can you just go into that a little bit, just generally speaking, and then for the students, we'll go into specifically the, the things you've done to gain your credits for experiential learning. Sure, so let me first start with what's the difference between an externship and a clinic. So Villanova has, uh, I think we're up to, is it, Phil, you helped me, six, seven clinics? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a lot of clinics. Um, as I think I mentioned before, almost all of them fulfill the experiential learning requirement. They are at various credits, some are eight, um, I think some are six, so it depends. But they all have a number of credits associated with them. So a clinic, these are in-house clinics, and we have full-time uh, faculty members who supervise those clinics. So you have real clients and you have real files and real legal disputes, and you are running the show as the student. You can do this as a sec as a 2L or a 3L. The, the, but you are being uh, supervised very much hands-on by a faculty member who you can go to with questions, who will help guide you, um, through the process, but who will very much uh, put you in the position of actually being the advocate. So again, these are full-time faculty members that oversee groups, small groups of students in each of these clinics each semester. Um, the externship is another way to get real life legal experience. And these are placements um, that we have cultivated with, again, there are literally hundreds of, of, uh, of them. So you might go work um, in a judicial externship, either in a summer or during one of the semesters, and you work under the tutelage of a judge or a judge's clerk, um, doing whatever it is that that clerk would do. So lots of research, lots of writing, um, you know, sometimes even uh, contributing to opinions, um, and then there are a whole host of other opportunities that are litigation oriented. As I said, just today, I proved one where they're going to go work for the PA disciplinary board. Um, but lots of research, lots of writing. Uh, typically, the you get a mentor at that placement and you have a faculty member also on the law school side who you you can report into and who will kind of oversee that experience and make sure you're getting what you're supposed to get out of it. Um, lots of times the, the mentor at the placement will take you and you might hear from the students um, to all kinds of to court, they might take you to a mediation or a negotiation, they might take you to a hearing, they might take you to a client interview, the entire um, purpose of the experience isn't for you to go be a helper, it's for you to actually get a substantive learning experience about that particular area of law. Um, I think that both ways to get experiential credits are really valuable. You can do both because we have this pretty generous um, allowance for how many credits you can obtain that way. Um, I think that the, you know, one of the nice things about um, the experiential learning, and I guess maybe even particularly the externships are figuring out exactly what area you want to practice in. Um, part of how you do that is running into things that you thought you might like, or maybe you thought you would you would try and you find out you don't. And so all of these are experiences where you can learn a lot about a particular area of law, see what it is that that kind of lawyer actually does, um, and decide if it's something that you think you want to look further into. 
Um, I think you heard Taylor say that she thought she wanted to do personal injury, and that's kind of where she has put her um, efforts, and it has it has really borne out um, to be what she I think what she what she thought it was. She can talk to that more. So that's how this is supposed to work. Um, the other nice thing, of course, is that you're making connections, you're impressing people, you're building your network. And um, although the purpose of an externship is not to land a job, it does happen sometimes because there is a relationship formed. You have proven yourself to that placement. And, and many times they'll say, you know, I, I think we're going to make a spot for you because you've been really valuable and we've had a good look at you for several months. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And just to briefly go through some of the clinics that we do offer, we offer clinics that relate to immigration law, um, tax work, health law, civil justice that deals with civil, uh, civil law matters as well. Um, so there's going to be a lot of exposure within the law school in our clinical programs. And then outside of the law school, through our externships, you can be placed with um, in in-house positions, uh, as Professor Mooney said, through judicial externships with judges uh, on the local, state, and federal level. Um, with law firms, as well as with public interest groups as well. And um, like she also mentioned, you can create new externships. And so to the extent that you have an externship that you'd like to do, that we don't have a pre-existing relationship with that organization, you can work with the director of externships, but also um, a professor like Professor Mooney to help get that off the ground and running. Um, and, and so that's, you know, kind of the opportunities are endless and there really are a lot of ways and paths that you can take to achieve those credits. Yeah, I'll just interject that um, your your mention of creating your own, you absolutely can do that. A number of years ago, I had a student who was from Nevada and was going to go back there and wanted to do gaming law. So we created an externship with him out there in Vegas and and uh, he was it. We didn't have that, um, but that really fit perfectly uh, with what he wanted to do. And so he was able to do that. So I'm going to turn it over to our students now. Seth, I'm going to start with you, um, and then I'll go to Lisa and, and Taylor. So just describe the different um, externships and or clinics that you've been a part of during your time at Villanova Law. If you have anything planned before you graduate as well, you can uh, sort of describe that as well. But just to give us a flavor for the different types of experiential learning opportunities that you've been able to take advantage of. Sounds great. So I've done two different externships so far, and then I have one more externship planned uh, for my last semester. The first one being uh, my first summer after 1L. I mentioned earlier uh, the Eastern District with uh, uh, Judge Joshua Wilson. Judge Wilson, it was his first year on the bench. Uh, he came from private practice. He's a young uh, federal judge. And speaking a, a little bit to creating an externship, he, he wasn't listed uh, on any of our uh, databases, which generally there's a lot of listings in the databases, but I reached out to him and he had an opening for the summer and me and two others from two other schools uh, were his first group of summer externs, which is a really great experience. And of course, uh, I reached out to the faculty and, and they were able to set it up with Judge Wilson, where uh, I was able to get credits, which that experience was uh, fantastic. I learned a lot. Uh, the writing and the research was something that still now I revert back to the things that I learned during that summer. So any opportunity to work with a judge, I think, uh, you know, nobody should pass that up. And then the next semester, I did a externship with the attorney general's office, the Pennsylvania attorney general's office. I was interested in, uh, you know, the government aspect of litigation. I had no experience and I felt that I, Professor Mooney touched on this, is it's an opportunity to uh, learn if it's something you like or learn something maybe you don't like. Uh, but regardless, an externship is sort of a, it's really, it's a risk-free way to, you know, really dive into a, an area you may not know much about. So I did that. Uh, phenomenal experience. Uh, I once again was blown away by uh, how much opportunity I was given during that externship to write, read, draft motions. Um, it was really a, a complete immersion. And although I, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to work in uh, the government side of litigation, I learned that through that externship, that wasn't exactly the place I want, I wanted to go right after graduation. So without that, um, you know, that I, I wouldn't have known that. So the next thing, this is for next spring, which I technically have my six credits, but like the, like has been mentioned, you can do more. Uh, the firm I'm joining almost exclusively practices in the Delaware court of chancery. And I really, uh, 
I have, I guess, an affinity for the court of chancery. It's an amazingly renowned court. And I wanted to do my last semester, try to get on the court, which it is, it can be difficult to get on the court just because there's only a few vice chancellors. And once again, I reached out and knowing that I had already had the six required credits, I reached out to uh, Professor McGovern and he was able to work it out. Uh, so I was able to do a six credit uh, externship on the Court of Chancery this next spring, which I'm really looking forward to. And I think it's going to be a great experience. Um, so I have a little bit of a different experience with the externship credits. I'm actually doing the Civil Justice Clinic this semester. Um, and it's about as close to real world lawyering as you can get um, as a student. Um, we have real cases like Professor Mooney mentioned and uh, the civil justice clinic does civil litigation. And so it's um, right now, you know, I'm dealing with a property case and a custody case. And so I've gotten to familiarize myself very quickly with two very different areas of the law. Um, I have a hearing in October that my partner and I are representing our client at. And so we get to go to court um, and, you know, go in front of a judge and make our case for our client. Um, and so it's really a great avenue for learning how to be an advocate and what um, a real lawyer does, um, even as a student. And so you still have um, connections like to your supervising professor if you have questions or concerns or anything like that. But it's really, um, you know, you get assigned cases and it's, it's up to you to decide what to do and to um, coordinate with your client and um, be an effective advocate for them and it's great experience. I have completed two externships. I'm in the process of completing my second. Um, my first was during my 1L summer with um, Judge Kenny at the Eastern District. And like I mentioned earlier, now I'm working for Judge King at the PA Superior Court. So I've had the opportunity to, to work on two different systems, the state and federal, one trial level, one appellate level. And it's been an amazing experience to not only refine the research and writing skills that I've been taught at Villanova, Nova, but also really synthesize everything else that I've learned in the other classes, like why a lawyer is making a certain motion, um, you know, the methods underlying why they're doing certain things. And um, Seth, Lisa, and I are also on the Moot Court Board, and that involves appellate advocacy. So now I'm reading appellate briefs, which are similar to the ones that we've had to write ourselves. And it's just been a great experience for everything to kind of come full circle and to synthesize, at least in my mind, um, what everything that I've learned and also an incredible experience to be able to speak to a judge, ask them questions, to get their feedback, to understand how things work um, will just prepare me, hopefully, to, to be a better litigator in the future. The so piggybacking off of that, Taylor, I want to come to, back to the students to describe your involvements on campus, to take a bit of a, a turn um, away from the concentration, but to just describe the ways you've been involved on campus through extracurriculars. I know that you just mentioned New Court which um, of course is something that we are really proud of the, the Moot Court team at the law school, but also we have a trial team at the law school as well. Can you all just go through right now and I'll just do the reverse order, Taylor, you can start just describing the different involvements you have on campus um, that relate to let's say Moot Court or any other student organizations that you're a part of and the ways in which you balance or strike a balance between academics and also let's say having a social life while in law school. Sure. So I'll start with Moot Court. And as you and Professor Mooney mentioned, um, we the, Villanova has a very robust writing for litigation requirement. So part of that requirement is to participate in Villanova's intra school Moot Court competition, Remols. And that is actually how I got on the Moot Court board. Um, I didn't go the traditional route of applying during my 1L summer. I actually took the, my litigation three class, participated in Remols, and was invited to join the Moot Court board after that. So that is something that can happen. Um, and that was just a really an amazing highlight in my whole 2L year. Um, so I competed not only in Remals, but then I had a partner on Moot Court and we competed at a national competition, Toro, in New York. Uh, virtually, so we didn't actually go. Um, and uh, this spring we will also compete in another national competition. So 
that's been an amazing experience again to just get that experience of actually arguing of actually being an advocate writing a brief submitting it and then arguing it to a, a usually very very esteemed panel of judges um, nationally who are have just had amazing careers and sometimes actual real life judges which is which is an awesome experience so in addition to that i am the vice president of street law which is um, an organization that provides civic and legal knowledge to inner city students that's been extremely rewarding. Um, we visit schools, we walk them through a, usually um, a very influential Supreme Court case. We tell them what it's like to be in law school and hopefully inspire them to pursue education. Um, and let's see what else. I'm also the president of the Personal Injury Society at here at Villanova. And those are my two involvements in student orgs that are separate from the academia. And I'm not the best person to ask for a social life because <laughs> I feel that that's somewhat on hold, but there is, it really is all about managing your time and it's all about prioritizing um, and making a schedule and sticking to it. Yeah, I was gonna say Taylor, um, I don't have a social life right now either, but <laughs> I think I definitely agree with the scheduling things and being organized. Um, as Taylor mentioned, I'm also on moot court. Um, I actually did the summer competition and then uh, received an invitation. Um, I also, did Remos uh, with my moot court partner, and then um, we competed virtually at a or in a family law um, external competition. Um, currently, Seth and I are the co-directors of the external competitions, and so we um, hopefully will be able to go to some places this year. Um, I think from what we've heard from alumni, it's a, it's a great experience to actually stand uh, and argue in front of people instead of behind a computer screen. Um, but ultimately, it's really a great experience to uh, write the brief and argue and develop um, really good connections with other people who have similar interests. Um, I'm also the vice president of the Pro Bono Society. And um, something, Taylor, that you said is, you know, in terms of, um, I know you're interested in personal injury, so you're the president of personal injury um, organization at school, I think it's important to find things that you care about and that you're interested in because then fitting it into your schedule, um, it really isn't work if you're doing something that you find um, either, you know, intellectually stimulating or you are passionate about. Um, and I think that Villanova has a, a number of organizations for everybody to, to find some part in. So uh, I think, uh, just speaking to the show, social life, I've made some really amazing friends during my time in law school. So it helps when uh, your friends also go to law school. So it makes scheduling uh, social events a lot easier. And I think we all sort of uh, get wrapped up in the law school experience. We are extremely busy, but uh, it's always nice to have individuals who sort of know what you're going through as well and you know breaking away for a night uh, to get dinner and things like that which we do on a regular basis so uh, from that aspect uh, it's the opportunity to meet friends at law school is something I, I didn't really think about coming in but has really been a blessing uh, and then of course moot court board Lisa mentioned uh, we are the director we're on the executive board for uh, the external competitions so a lot of my time this semester has been organizing and reaching out to the national competitions and making sure we get uh, the individuals on the team signed up, uh, trying to match up their interests with the competition's topic. So some of the competitions, maybe their employment law or constitutional law or personal injury, things of that nature. We have individuals on the board who have varying interests. So we try our best, uh, depending on what's out there to, to match those interests so they you know enjoy their competition that much more. And then the last thing, uh, my first year I did with the Pro Bono Society, we did a Wills for Heroes. Uh, program you go uh, and individuals that served in the military or first responders who don't have a will written, uh, you have the opportunity to sit down with them and work them through writing a will, which is an, an extremely important thing for everyone to have. And so it's uh, free of charge for them. So that was a great experience my first year too. Uh, it's an opportunity to give back, but of course it's a learning experience as well. So, uh, you know, the extracurricular activities are, are out there. And uh, as long as you're willing to, you know, put the time in to utilize them, I, I think it's amazing from a networking standpoint and then just an experience standpoint, what they have to offer. 
Awesome. Thank you all for that. Well, I want to give Professor Mooney the last word to just give us a sense of what you feel is particularly strong about Villanova's litigation and trial advocacy programs. And then we'll get to some of the questions that I have here for you all from those in attendance. Sure. Um, I think you can probably tell how deeply I feel about this concentration and how um, enthusiastic I am about the opportunities that it offers and the richness of our curriculum. I think what makes us distinctive, um, if I had to name one overarching thing, is the way that our program is structured and the requirements are structured is that it is almost a relentless emphasis on learn, now go do it. Learn some more, now go do it. Come on back and we're going to learn this, now you're going to go do it. So um, whether it is our classes where you're going to, we're going to do some reading and we're going to um, see some examples, but you're going to go do it. So I can speak to the classes that I teach, um, which are currently negotiation and interviewing and counseling. Um, I've had all these three uh, students who are just fantastic um, examples and people who really embrace the concentration. Um, and I think they can attest is that this is not, uh, these are not classes that you're going to sit there and just listen to a lecture. Um, if you are in my negotiation class or my interviewing counseling class, you are either negotiating or interviewing counseling every single week. Um, we then, as you know, mentioned, you go out and into the, we put you in the outside world, whether that's through a clinic under the supervision of a faculty member or out doing, you know, one, two, three, multiple externships. Um, the, the extracurricular opportunities. In addition to Moot Court, um, we also have a, a terrific trial team and it is run sort of in the same way. Groups of students represent Villanova externally at various trial competitions. Um, so people go do that. We also have um, a sports negotiation team that is a newer um, effort, but we have students who are interested in that area of law um, going and competing in negotiations, um, whether it's, I think there's one for basketball, there's one for football, and there's one for baseball. Um, and they represent Villanova and have done in, incredibly well um, and, and have won the whole thing for, for a few years running. Um, so gonna, you're going to learn. We're going to help you with a lot of freedom to pick in what through what vehicle you want to learn your litigation skills. Um, but you're going to come out equipped because everybody's got to take the foundational ones. Then you choose according to what areas of law you're interested in. And we're going to constantly not just tell you this is how it's done. We're going to have you go do it and practice it. So I think just the consistency of that, um, I think, has given our students a real leg up because they can point to experiences, kind of what was described in the depositions class, where they have encountered um, They've encountered real challenges that are real world challenges that have prepared them in a way that someone who is just sitting, learning um, and, and listening and absorbing is not not gonna have that foundation to stand on. Thank you so much for that. So I'm gonna just ask our student panelists right now, if you all can go to the chat box and just put your email address in there for those that are in attendance. I'm gonna do the same thing right now as well. Those of you that are in attendance, feel free to reach out to our students if you have questions after today's presentation. Um, I, of course, am available to answer any questions that you have related to admissions, about applying to Villanova Law, anything related to that. If you'd like to be connected with a student or Professor Mooney, definitely feel free to email me as well so that I can put you in touch um, with anybody here and any other you know, individuals at the law school that can be helpful to you. Um, one of the questions that I have here um, from someone in attendance, and I guess I can ask it to the students and maybe one or two of you can answer it. Um, the question says, Knowing that your adjunct faculty professors are practicing attorneys, how accessible did you find them? Um, Taylor, I know you mentioned having that and Seth. So if you just want to just give a brief um, answer to that question, that'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, I actually have three. Well, one is one of my professors this semester is, is a judge, Judge Slomsky. So other than that, I have three classes with practicing attorneys. So the one is the depositions. Um, Andy, as he wants us to call him, I always want to call him Professor uh, Uvin because, you know, I'm from the South. That's just that's just how it is. Um, but Andy has been very accessible and very responsive. Um, I Tonight I have trial advocacy. One professor is a federal prosecutor and the other is a private 
private defense attorney, um, their availability varies, but I have never had to wait more than like 48 hours for a response. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, and then my final class with a practicing attorney is class actions and other complex litigation. And she's extremely quick with emails. So I, I know that that probably varies from attorney to attorney, but I do know that they really put so much effort into making themselves available for us. And they're fantastic professors. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, really, I mean, I can speak to Professor Maheen who also asked that you call her Colleen. She, I, I can't imagine how busy she is, but like she fires emails back like almost immediately. And she's helped me out with networking and talked to me, uh, you know, not in class, outside of class about uh, job search when I was job searching. So she was ex not only accessible, but uh, also ex extremely helpful. And Lisa and Seth, I'm going to come to you for this next question. Why is it that you all ultimately chose to apply to be a part of the concentration? I know that Professor Mooney mentioned beforehand that you don't have to decide until you're in your 1L spring semester, so your second semester of law school. But why ultimately did both of you decide to do the concentration? So I, um, I kind of knew I wanted to do something litigation related. And I, as I was planning my classes um, and looking into the concentration, I realized that most of the classes I wanted to take were concentration requirements. And so it just seemed to fit. Um, and I think that it really, it, it narrows your focus. So when you're doing course selection, it can be a little overwhelming to think about, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to take? What's going to help me the most? And I think it really gives a good structure knowing um, even if you don't know for certain that you want to do a litigation job after graduating, I think that it provides a really good framework to really give you some great um, options to, I think somebody mentioned, um, you know, having a leg up when you go into practice, it's getting the experience, not only the knowledge, but learning how to be a lawyer too, that the concentration provides. So the I think Professor Mooney mentioned earlier, it, it sort of brands you uh, with a litigation focus and that's on your resume. So most of the time you have this question is like, do you wanna do transactional or do you wanna be a litigator? And I think having this on your resume sort of answers that question for places that you, you may be interviewing. So when they see that on your resume, if they're looking for a an individual to help with litigation or that's their practice, their, uh, that practice group is hiring, it, it answers those questions right away. They, they don't have to worry if, you know, the individual we're interviewing, or what if they don't want to do litigation it, right out in front of them. They know that I've spent my law school uh, career sort of tailoring uh, my education towards litigation. So that was a big reason for me in applying was not only obviously all the courses, but uh, just to make it apparent that uh, this is what I want to do. And that's where my focus is, is drawn. The next question that I have here is more is, is for Taylor specifically. Um, Taylor, you had mentioned that you came to Villanova from Florida. How has that experience been for you uh, moving across country for law school? And you mentioned that you want to go back to South Florida afterwards for employment. And how was that uh, process? Well, it was um, it was an easier transition than I thought it would be. Um, as I said, I went to undergrad also in South Florida. So this was my first time moving away from home. Um, and I have some cousins up in the area as well. So it wasn't like I came up and I was totally stranded. I do have family here, um, but I did really feel embraced by the Villanova community. And something that Seth said is so true. When you go through this experience with other students who are going through the same thing, we're all you know worried about our classes and studying and we're all very busy and it does make you feel um, like you are supported just from just from being that environment. So that that is something that I was surprised that it was such an easy transition for me. Um, 
And going back, I will admit it hasn't been easy, right? Because I spent the last two and a half years now making connections um, with, with attorneys up in this area and trying to make a name for myself up in Eastern PA. So it hasn't, it hasn't been easy. Um, but I will say that whenever you move back, like if you're moving back to where you were originally from, you have to really take advantage of the contacts that you had before. They might not all be legal because when I, when I first um, moved, of course, I didn't do any legal work down in Florida. Um, so, but you have to really take advantage of the people that you know, and that person will know somebody else will know somebody else. So when I decided to move back, I really embarked on this whole process of like, okay, calling everybody, letting them know I'm coming back. And they keep that in their mind and they recommend you to, and they introduce you to other people who they think could help. And that has really been the path that I'm taking. And it's definitely um, turned many stones. So I was that that's my advice. I only have one more question here from our attendees. So if anybody else has any questions, feel free to um, to, to message it to me or to put it in the Q&A box. But the last question I'll have all of our students really um, give an answer to briefly. Um, it, the question is, how would you describe the community and culture of Villanova Law School for those that are looking to apply? And we can start with Lisa, if you'd like to go first, and then Taylor and Seth. Yeah, I think... Um... It's going to sound really cheesy, but I think the best word I can think of is just welcoming and encouraging. I don't think there's ever been a point, um, whether it's, you know, course registration or, you know, homework or something like that, where I haven't had someone to go to, whether, it's, you know, a classmate or a professor or, you know, a dean or someone in their office hours. And I think that um, Villanova is a great place because it's, you know, every law school is going to be competitive. But I think that Villanova stands out because of how supportive everyone is. And it's just a really great community. Um, you know, I've met people who I think are going to be my good friends for the rest of my life here. And I think that that's very, it's a very unique situation, especially in a competitive school. Um, but it's it's really very welcoming and supportive, um, at, you know, even in a pandemic. Absolutely. I think that the environment lends itself to being competitive, but I have never felt, I was warned like before coming to law school that it can be cutthroat and all these things. I've never felt that way once with one person. I really feel that the environment is supportive and understanding and everything has been constructive towards all of us becoming um, attorneys in the future. So I love that about Villanova. And something that Lisa said earlier uh, in terms of the student organizations, there are so many here at Villanova. There are people who are interested in the same things as you, and you can find those deeper connections with, with students if you're struggling to do that by student organizations that share the same interests. Um, and you can really bond yourself to others based on the passions and common interests that you have. So I would really encourage you to also look into student orgs and see where you can connect with people from there. The I think I realized that uh, Villanova was the right fit for me when I toured around to you know a bunch of different law schools, and then when I came to Villanova, it, it really just felt uh, it, it. I just had a different feel to it. It was much more open, uh, more transparent, uh, honest, welcoming, like like Lisa said. And then it really came full circle uh, this past weekend. We had our an annual event, the Red Mass, and. Uh, guests can come. And so it was the first time my mom had the opportunity to come and be in the law school with the pandemic. There was, you know, no outsiders were in the law school. So this time she had the opportunity to come to the law school and to meet a lot of my friends that she hadn't met. And uh, when, when she left, she texted me and was said, you know, I can tell that you made the right choice. And it was just through my friends and the faculty and everyone was so positive and jovial and welcoming. So uh, I, I can't speak to what other, you know, law school experience is like, but I know here it seems to be a commonality between everyone that uh, it's it's just really a family feel. Thank you all for that, for sharing those uh, personal sentiments. Um, well, I don't have any other questions in the Q&A box right now or to me. So if anybody else has any questions, I'm going to stay on for another minute or so. But I want to thank all of our panelists for joining today. I know Taylor is headed off to class right now. So thank you all so much for joining Professor Mooney as well. Um, if you have any questions moving forward, don't hesitate to email myself or to email any of our students. Or if you'd like to be connected otherwise, feel free to let me know. But um, we wish you the best of luck in applying to law schools. And we hope that Villanova will consider will con continue to be a law school that you consider for yourself. Um, but thank you all so much and have a great night and stay safe, everybody.